Hey everybody, final thoughts time for the Palaces of Carrara 2nd Edition, but before I get to that, please remember folks, this is a paid Kickstarter preview. And with that out of the way, well, of course, I love this. This game made my top 10 of 2012. I mean, almost a decade ago, I was playing my original very well-loved German copy of the game that I had to do paste-ups for, because that's the way it was back in 2012. If you really wanted a hot Euro game, you had to play it in German more often than not. Um, oh, how times have changed. But anyway, uh, and actually, I, I pulled this up, if not for anything else, to point out it's been almost a decade since I got this, and I have gone through a bunch of calls of games in my collections over the years, especially when we moved from Malta back to the United States, and I was trying to get rid of games left, right, and center. But I would never part with this. I always held on to my Palaces of Carrara because the core gameplay is so great. And so to see it finally available to a wider audience with a very, very updated uh, you know, take, there's a lot of design changes here, it just warms my heart so much. Uh, and really, all the new elements. I mean, everything I said about the original game when I covered it back in 2012 and it was in my top 10 of the year, uh, that's still true. You could go watch my original run-through if you wanted to hear what I thought. I stand by every single one of those things. All those things are true here. What they have done to um, update it with the new advanced rules, there's some very, very cool ideas. One of them being the second wheel. The second wheel that um, rotates along with the main wheel, that as you are changing the value of things, you're also potentially changing what decorations you can get. Because decorations used to be a whole different thing. Actually, uh, what decorations used to be is kind of what statues are now, but even those work differently. Um, but it's a really, really cool idea that, uh, well, okay, I, I don't want to make things cheaper for you because what I want to buy is already pretty good, so I won't rotate the whole wheel. I'll just rotate this so that I can get a red statue instead of that green statue I didn't have any use for because there's this whole extra game now of like area control in each of the different cities trying to get the most statues out there. I mean, that really adds a ton to the gameplay. And the game was already really rich and deep. Um, you know, so you've got this new statue thing and the alternate way that uh, decorations work. They still pretty much do the same thing, but you collect them in a different way. Uh, but the core game is still the same. You're either getting resources, and every time you do it, you're making stuff cheaper for your opponents, or most of the times when you do it. You are building buildings. You can still do upgrades, although interestingly now, you can only upgrade to the monuments. In the original game, you could upgrade any building to its next level up. Now, that's reserved for the monuments. Um, but... On the flip side, there's this whole new thing of being able to upgrade marble. Turning two purples into a blue can be a lifesaver, although you're not allowed to chain it. But, I mean, that really adds a lot. And I think, more than anything else, this represents the biggest change to the true feel of Carrara. Because of the other thing. When I um, rotate the wheel and I buy everything in an area... I get an instant reward. I get a decoration or I get a statue. Nothing like that existed in the original Carrara. And as a result, what you often found was things getting slowly cheaper as players just cherry-picked a couple of things they needed out of a given spot uh, because, well, okay, I don't need all the stuff that's there. I just need these things. And, you know, and then, you know, that meant other people would pick up deals as it rotated on further down the road because you were very specific. But now that you are incentivized to grab everything out of an area so you can get those bonuses and that means you will often be stuck with a hodgepodge of colors that you don't particularly need for the cities you want to build in well now you can convert two purples that you just got that you didn't need into a blue that maybe you do need. And uh, so that really gives the game a very different flavor. And one of the most important things is the original game, it was pretty rare that people would buy things at full price. But if I do a rotation that just brings out a couple of new cubes, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tempted to pay a premium to grab them right here so I can get that bonus. That's almost more important to me than the actual marble I'm trying to pick up. So the, the, the dynamics of this wheel have really changed and become a lot more interesting. It was generally b before a, a little bit more you know, preordained how things were going to work out. I could say, especially in a two-player game, well, okay, I think I'm going to be able to get that next week because I figure you're probably going to be getting this or the other thing. Now, with this extra bonus of you know, clear an area out, even if it means you you're getting stuff you don't want that you'll be able to convert later to get those bonuses. That really, really changes the feel. There's one other thing that really, really changes the feel, and it's not for the better. Um, the new second edition of Palaces of Carrara has jettisoned 
the objective cards or the uh, the end the game end cards, uh, and instead you've got a fixed way the game is always going to end no matter what. It's, uh, you know, buildings built plus visits from the royal palace, and those could be ways the game ended. But in the original game, it came with this big old deck of all kinds of different stuff that would make the gameplay radically different, or at least the gameplay is always the same, but it made you focus on different things from game to game. Honestly. That was the secret sauce of the game. That's what made Jen and I love it so much. That's what had me holding on to this for almost a decade, was all those objective cards. And the default for Palaces of Karar 2nd Edition does not include those cards. Because they've added so much other stuff that has you know, enriched and um, you know, made the game more complex. I guess they figured, oh, well, these cards make it even more complex. Now, for me, that is heartbreaking. But uh, my spirits were lifted when I found out that the, um, the uh, new publisher, Game Brewer, does plan to make those cards available as an extra bonus. I believe it's like an extra five bucks to get this little deck of cards. They won't come in the retail edition, so this is certainly a reason to pay attention to this while it's on Kickstarter. You can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen because I don't know. I've asked, but I haven't gotten an answer yet. I don't know if those those uh, you know those in-game objective cards will be available outside of the Kickstarter campaign. I'm assuming they will? That's probably something you can ask on the Kickstarter page and find out. But to me, they are absolutely essential. And while I loved all the new stuff that's in this game, uh, you know, the, the, the new twist, the conversions, the, the uh, area control elements that never existed before, this is all really neat, cool additional stuff that elevates the game. Without those objective cards, oh, my heart sank. And uh, so and it was hard coming back and playing Karara without them. Don't get me wrong. If I never knew that those objective cards existed, and you sat me down and played this, I wouldn't think the game needed it. But having experienced them, uh, I have a strong sense of nostalgia for them, and I miss them terribly. And fortunately, they will be available. Also, it's called the $5, I think it's called the Retro Pack, because it enables the old rules. It also lets you play the game the original way, if you if you miss that. So this new version lets you, uh, you know play with the old rules, or the new rules, or a combination of the new rules. So, to me, that's kind of absolutely Absolutely essential. So it's definitely something to look for if you're interested in this. If you know, I mean, this game has been for 10 years. People have been regularly posting on my old original Palaces of Karar run through. How can I get this game? I can't find it anywhere. Um, and you could find it if you're willing to get a German version. But now it's going to be available wide. It's going to be a completely new production. Remember, folks, you're looking at uh, a modified version of the original game. Hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen to go check out the Kickstarter page to see what the new final version looks like with the statue tokens and all of that stuff. Long story short, I've always loved Carrara, and I believe I am going to love it even more going into the future with this second edition, because it gives me everything I want and more. And that was the preview, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye bye